वेलकम टू ईवो न्यूज आर वीकली फ्राइडे न्यूज ड्रॉप ऑन यूट्यूब यर्स वे यू गेट टू नो ऑल वॉट हैपन इन द ऑटोमोटिव वर्ल्ड दिस पास्ट वीक दिस वीक वी ब्रिंग टू यू कार एंड बाइक न्यूज बट फर्स्ट वी स्टार्ट विद मोटर स्पोर्ट दैट्स राइट द बिग न्यूज दिस वीक इज अफकोर्स फॉर्मूला ई हैदराबाद स्ट्रीट सर्किट होस्टेड इट्स फर्स्ट एवर फॉर्मूला ई रेस लास्ट वीक एंड द फर्स्ट एफ आई ए सैंक्शन इवेंट इन द कंट्री इन अ डिकेड As expected there was plenty of excitement in the paddock towards the build up to the race with two home teams participating Mahindra Racing of course stole the show with plenty of happening on the sidelines of the race weekend but more on that later another indian representation was jaguar tcs racing since jaguar is a part of the tata group and tcs is their main sponsor there was plenty to look forward to Jaguar TCS Racing kept expectations high with a strong showing in qualifying. Mitch Evans the New Zealander took pole but unfortunately the race didn't pan out for them as they crashed into each other early during the race. Mahindra Racing's Oliver Rowland came in 7th to give their first home points finish. Jean-Éric Wern won the race for DS Penske. Nick Cassidy picked up second for Envision and Antonio Felix da Costa made massive progress from his 13th place start to bag third. Now to the Renault Nissan Alliance news. Things may have been a bit cold on the Renault Nissan front in the recent past but things are about to change very soon. The Alliance has announced the launch of six new models in India starting 2025. This will be a part of a fresh 5300 crore investment and a rejected 5149% equity holding in favor of Nissan. While the first locally produced new car will only come 3 years later, the Alliance is going to introduce CBUs they showcased in Delhi last year. These include the Xtrail, the Qashqai and the Juke. The plan is to keep excitement going in the brand until the new models are launched. Speaking of these new models, these are going to essentially be three new models that look very different for each brand. The days of badge engineering have long gone according to the alliance. Each car will look very different and there will be clear distinctiveness specific to the brand. There will be a A segment EV essentially a quid EV in the future that aims to take on the Tiago EV when it hits the market. The C segment should have Turbo petrol engines to take on the likes of the Creta, Grand Vitara, Kushak, and their siblings. The company did add that the platforms that these SUVs are based on are capable of being adapted to PHEV or EV powertrains. Now to some proper news for the enthusiast. Mercedes launched the AMG E53 4Matic Cabriolet just before the Auto Expo. This is AMG's sexier take on the E53 sedan and when it came a few days before the Auto Expo last month, excitement was brimming. We recently drove the car and were mighty impressed by its everyday usability and thrilling performance. Under the hood is a 3-liter turbocharged straight 6 petrol engine. It also gets an integrated starter generator and cumulatively the E53 Cabrio makes 450 bhp and 770 newton meters of torque. Power is sent to all four wheels via the quick shifting 9-speed auto box. Key highlights The roof is available in four shades and it opens and folds even when you are on the move under 50 kilometers per hour. 0 to 100 comes in a claimed 4.5 seconds and the convertible has a top speed of 250 kilometers per hour. Ride quality and creamy smooth engine are definitely winners for this AMG. It feels light on its feet. The suspension is adjustable so you set it in the softest tune and you could drive everywhere in the city. Dial in the drive modes up and the E53 can scorch and hill climb. Read all about it very soon in Atish's review on our website. Now to more Mercedes news. Bookings have reopened for the G63 and GLS Maybach. Both these SUVs are in huge demand, so Mercedes-Benz India will first offer existing Mercedes customers a chance to express their interest in the cars. After which bookings will open to everyone. On the global front, Mercedes unveiled the Maybach S580e PHEV. The Maybach S580e has a 3-liter inline-6 petrol engine and an e-motor. The combined system output is 503 bhp and 750 newton meters of torque, all delivered in that typical unhurried Maybach way. 0 to 100 comes in 5.1 seconds. 
टॉप स्पीड इज टू फिफ्टी किलोमीटर्स पर आर और यू कुड डू वन फोर्टी किलोमीटर्स पर आर ऑन इलेक्ट्रिक पावर अरोन दैट्स राइट द बैटरी हैज़ अ रेंज ऑफ हंड्रेड किलोमीटर्स एंड यू कैन चार्ज इट फुल्ली यूजिंग अ सिक्सटी किलो वॉट चार्जर इन जस्ट थर्टी मिनट्स Two pieces of news came in from Hyundai this week. Hyundai has opened bookings for the next generation Verna and teased a few images of the sedan. The sedan will go on sale in May this year and will only be offered with petrol engines. The teasers show similar styling cues to what we are now quite familiar with with the i20 and the Tucson. Plenty of cuts and creases dominate the styling, a sportier stance and a light bar running the width of the car to connect the tail lamp. Going by the design of the Tucson, the Verna should be quite a striking car in its segment. The big talking point at the launch of the Verna will be the new direct injection turbo petrol engine. It's a 1.5 liter unit and expect power in the ballpark of 155 to 160 bhp. It will come mated to either a 6-speed manual or a 7-speed dual-clutch gearbox. The other lower spec engine on offer in the Verna will be the 1.5 Natasp engine mated to the same 6-speed manual gearbox and a CVT gearbox. With the axing of the diesel engine in the next-gen Verna, this segment will finally have no diesel engine option whatsoever. The Ionic 5 has received great response in India. Hyundai launched the Ionic 5 at the Auto Expo at an introductory price of 44.95 lakhs for the first 500 customers. When Sirish drove the car recently at the media drives Hyundai India informed us that they have already received 690 bookings for the Ionic 5 the price has now gone up by 1 lakh which honestly isn't much Hyundai says that there has been no impact of the budget on them in the budget this year duties of semi knockdown kits has gone up for electric components but Hyundai says that the way they are assembling the Ionic 5 it isn't impacted now to Mahindra's BE Rally E concept Making a huge splash on the sidelines of the Formula E race in Hyderabad, Mahindra unveiled the BE Rally concept at the Mahindra EV Fashion Festival. The BE Rally concept is a tougher take on a BE05 coupe SUV Mahindra unveiled last year. You get more aggressive styling, a bunch of accessories including a roof mounted carrier with a spare wheel mounted on top of it and chunky off-road tires. Mahindra even plans to get this radical concept into production after the BE05 is launched towards the end of 2025. A quick additional update from Mahindra, the Pininfarina Batista was seen in the flesh at the Hyderabad street circuit. Mahindra owned Pininfarina's first electric hypercar, the Batista made its debut in India. The 1874 bhp hypercar was piloted by Jehan Daruwala around the street circuit. A special Indian tricolor livery was done specifically for this event. Don't expect it to be launched in India anytime soon though. This was a heavy news week in the automotive world. Tata Motors quietly announced that all the cars in its portfolio are now updated to comply with the RDE norms that kick in in April. The petrol engines are also E20 compliant which is a 20% ethanol mix. Maruti Suzuki gave the CS a minor update this week. You now get ESP and Hill Hold Assist in all variants of the CS. Up until now, only the automatic variants got this feature. The CS can also be bought now in a dual tone paint scheme for an extra sixteen thousand rupees. Now, finally, to some bike news. Yamaha has launched its 2023 range of motorcycles. The R15M MT15 V2, FZS, FI V4 and the FZX all now get traction control and LED indicators. The FZS FI V4 gets the biggest change with a new LED headlight with DRLs and three new color options. that include gray red and black it is priced at rupees 1.27 lakh the new r15m gets a tft display with bluetooth connectivity which can show a lap timer too prices start at 1.93 lakhs and there's a new dark night color option available with the update The new MT15 is priced at 1.67 lakhs. It gets dual channel ABS and a new color dubbed metallic black. The FZX has also been updated with golden alloys and demands 1.36 lakhs. 
that's it for the news this week. If you like this video, leave us a comment, share it with like-minded enthusiasts and do give us feedback on what you'd like us to cover more going forward. Thank you for sticking around till the end. See you next week.